Don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell. Hello there, my special friends. I hope you're doing fine today. Me? I am fine. I am fine like wine. And uh, how is that? Because we, you and I, my friend, did I call you a friend yet? You're my friend. We are going to do free response question number five, AP Calculus AB 2023. And for this question, uh, we don't get a calculator. What? How? Why? But why? Why don't we have a calculator? Just calm down. Stop acting like you're four years old. We used to get a calculator for problems one and two, but for three, four, five, and six, we do not. You know this by now. Hmm, don't make me shame you. You know this. You know what? Let's stop arguing. Let's, let's just do some math. Let's breathe in through the nose, out through the mouth. And make sure you got on your diaper, because you might poop yourself when you see this problem. Problem number five. The functions f and g are twice differentiable. The table shown gives values of the functions and their first derivatives at selected values of x. Have I ever told you how much I love tables and graphs and charts and pictures? I love them. And I love that question five has one for us right above here. 5a states, let h be the function defined by h of x equals f of g of x. Find h prime of 7 and show the work that leads to your answers. Wunderbar. Easy. They are testing you on one thing, the chain rule for derivatives. All right? So let's just jump right in and say, first of all, before I find h prime of 7, let's just figure out what h prime of x is. All right. Again, I stated the chain rule. We work outside in. And what does that mean? In the parentheses, I'm going to leave alone for the first pass. I am just going to take the derivative of f. I don't have an equation to take the derivative of. No, you don't. But I do know that the derivative of f is f prime. Like I said, for the first go around, I'm going to leave the inside the same. But the chain rule states I then have to multiply by the derivative of the inside. Once again, I don't know what g of x is in the equations. Yeah, I don't need to. Because I know the derivative of g of x is just g prime of x. And that's the chain rule. Outside, we take the derivative of. The inside stays the same. Then I multiply by the derivative of the inside. It's how we take the derivative of almost everything. Okay, including trigonometry. It's, it's big with that. All right. So here we go. That's the derivative of h. They want this. Okay. Let's see what we have. They want h prime. Wow. What happened there, kids? It's like Visca had a stroke. Okay. h prime of 7. I'm going to put a 7 in for every x. So f prime of g of 7 times g prime of 7. Right? And now is when I'm going to look at my table. And this, kids, is where I like to use highlighters and intersection points. And you don't need to, but it's nice for visual graphics for learners. So the first thing I can do is I'm going to find what g of 7 is. I cannot take the derivative of f yet until I know what g of 7 is. All right? And I can also find g prime of 7 as well. So let's first find mm, blue. Let's first find g of 7. All right, well, here's g of x, and I want that where x is 7. <whistles> Boom, look where they intersect. You see how I did that there, kids? It's fantastic. That's actually 0. Okay, g of 7 is actually 0. All right, well, I come down here, so I'm going to take f prime of this is zero. So now I can figure this out. But first, let's find g prime of seven. We'll go back up to our little handy dandy chart. And now we're going to say g prime 
is here. And 7 has not changed. It's still here. So g prime of 7, they intersect right. That's 8. That's a number 8. So I go, no, do, 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 do. So I really only have one thing left to do. What is f prime of 0? Because I'm going to multiply that times my 8. All right. Go back up to the table. Let's get rid of some of this stuff to make it nice and fresh and clean. Okay, so we want f prime of 0. Here's f prime. Okay, here's where it equals 0. Oh, and look how it turns green right where they intersect. That's why I like using those highlighters. f prime of 0 is 3 over 2, 3 halves. All right, well, 2 goes into 8 4 times. 3 times 4 is 12. All right, we answer the question. What's h prime of 7? Well, here it is, Gavna. And uh, show your work. Oh, look at how pretty that is. I told you we got this. 5b. Let k be a differentiable function such that k prime of x, or the derivative, first derivative of k, is f of x squared times g of x. Is the graph of k concave up or concave down at the point where x is 4? Give a reason for your answer. All right, we have another function okay, that's made up of function f and g from the table. Okay, we have k. More specifically, we have, let's, let's go purple. More specifically, we have the derivative, the first derivative of k. It's this whole piece of poo-poo right there. Now, after that, they're asking us, is k concave up or concave down? You should immediately know that when they're asking about concavity, we need to take a look at the second derivative of k, which is only, okay, taking the derivative of the first derivative, okay? So I'm really taking the derivative of this whole thing here. Okay? Again, derivative, again, chain rule, Product rule, you're multiplying f of x times g of x. Yes, I know f of x is squared, okay, but it's f of x squared times g of x. It screams product rule. Know your basic rules about derivatives, okay? So we're going to get back to this concavity on the right side here. Is it concave up or concave down? Well, if the second derivative is greater than zero or positive, that means it's concave up. If my second derivative of k is negative or less than 0, that means it's concave down. Okay, so we're going to take the second derivative, figure out what it is at for the second derivative, and we're going to have a number to evaluate. Is it positive? Is it negative? Is it concave up or is it concave down? All right, let's start. Oh, let me get a little bit of room here. I'll get this out. So, again, we're going to use the product rule. We have the first derivative. We need the second derivative. So, the product rule states, hmm, the first, just as it is. So, it's f. What? Well, that's, you know what? That's bad. f of x squared. So, it's the first times the derivative of the second. So times g prime of x plus the second, which is g of x, just as it is, times the derivative of the first. Now, again, that's chain rule. We have an outside and we have an inside. What do I mean? Inside is f of x. So I'm going to worry about doing the derivative to the exponent of 2 first. Remember, the 2 comes down front, and then my new exponent becomes 1. But anything to the power of 1, we really don't have to write. Okay? The inside stays the same. Then, according to the chain rule, I now multiply by the derivative of the inside. There you go. So this whole thing that I wrote in purple is the derivative of this first term, all right? 
And this whole thing is the derivative of the first derivative, which gives us the second derivative of x. All right, well, now I need to evaluate this at 4. And I've got to see what my number is. Is it positive? Then it's concave up. Is it negative? Then it's concave down. So the second derivative of k at 4, and I'm just going to put a 4 in for each one of these x's. The highlighters do a better job. There's 4 there, 4 there, 4 there, 4 there, 4 there. There are 5 x's, which means there's 5 numbers that I'm going to get from the table above. All right, so let's just plug them in. We've got f of 4. This whole thing gets squared times g prime of 4 plus g of 4 times 2 times f of 4 times f prime of 4. Woo! A lot of 4s there. Let's look at our table. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do here uh -huh, is let's find f of 4. Here's f. Here's 4. They intersect right here. f of 4 is 4. So keep in mind, if this is 4, I'm still squaring it, what's inside. So that gives me 16 times. All right, let's find g prime of 4. Here's g prime. 4 is still in this column right here. They intersect right here. It's 2. So this is times... 2 plus, let's find g of 4 in the table. g function is here. 4 is still this column. They intersect at negative 3. All right, so that's going to be negative 3 times 2, because that's just a 2. f of 4, we already figured out what f of 4 was. It's 4. All right, f prime of 4. It's the last thing we need, and then we're going to start doing some algebra. So times f prime of 4. Let's go up to our table. Here's f prime. My 4 column is still here. That's positive 3. Positive 3, 3. So let's now do the math. 16, oh, 16 times 2 is 32, plus... Well, a negative times all these positives is going to end up giving us a negative number. So I could say plus a negative, or I could just say minus. It does not matter which way I write it. 3 times 3 is 9. 9 times 2. Now let's do it this way. 4 times 2 is 8. 9 times 8 is 72. So minus 72. Or plus a negative 72. And if I have negative 72 and I add 32 to it, I get negative 40. Okay, so this here is the second derivative of k at 4. We seem to have done a lot of work, but we haven't answered the question fully. The question isn't, what's the second derivative of k at 4? The question is, is k concave up or down? And let's not forget what we did here initially. We need to take our value and see if it's positive or negative. That's negative. So let's answer the question. K is concave down. But be specific. At x equals 4 since the second derivative of k at 4 is less than 0. You could have said because it was negative, whatever, but be specific. Concave down is answering the question. Where? Specifically here. How come? Because of this. Okay? Be specific. 5C. This is going well. If you're just if you just fast forwarded to 5C, you missed a hoot. 5A and 5B. Oh, good times, man. Good times. But you know what? A and B were really good problems, do very algebra heavy, and this is going to continue down that slope. Um, 5C reads, let M be the function defined by M of X equals 5X cubed plus the integration from 0 to X of F prime of T 
dt, right? Find m of 2 and show the work that leads to your answer. All right. So now we've got an integral here. We're not taking the derivative of the integral, so it won't go away. We actually need to find m of 2. So let's start by simply, okay, this 2 is going to go in for every x right here and right here. So m of 2 is going to equal 5 times 2 cubed. That's easy to figure out. Plus, I don't know why I wrote an equal there, plus the integration from 0. Again, I've got an x up here that's going to become 2 of f prime of t dt. All right. Here we go. The first part, simple. 2 cubed is 8. 8 times 5, well, I, I believe that's 40. So put a 40 there. It is 40, kids. Don't check that. I'm just being silly. 40. But this right here, okay, uh, every once in a while, I, I, I kind of raise my voice and I say, there are just certain things you need to understand about calculus that are the basis of calculus. And when it comes to integrations, and when it comes to relating an original equation compared to the derivative, compared to the second derivative, I think we all understand that if I go this way, it's one derivative away as we go to the right. And as I go this way, it's an integration. All right. So look what we're doing. We have this and we're integrating it. So our result should be the original f. So if I integrate the derivative of f, I should get the original f. But it's always from the top bound minus putting in the bottom bound. Okay, so you need to understand that. This will give me one number. So whatever this is, is going to get added to 40. All right, once again, integrating f prime gives you f. But it's the top bound minus the bottom bound. The top bound of 2 minus the bottom bound of zero. If you understand it, this problem is so easy, it's crazy. This whole problem five so far has been really easy. Let's look at our table and figure things out. F of two, let's go up here. Here's F, here's two, it's seven. So we have seven minus, mm, this is black, F of zero. Let's go up, here's my F function still. Here is 0. Oh, hey, that's 10. Minus 10. This gives you negative 3. So we got 40 plus a negative 3. And again, these problems are easy algebraically. It's the setup. It's the process. Okay? This is a problem without a calculator. Sometimes there's natural logs involved. There's sines and cosines of certain angles that you should know. This is none of that. It's basic algebra. 37, and let's see, okay, let M find M of 2. So I'll just say this equals M of 2. There you go, we did that. Show the work that leads to your answer. I mean, I don't need this here. That's just for explanation for some people that were a little bit lost or confused. But I will put that, oh, where did it go? There it is. Oh, no, I'll put that back there. There you go, we got one more thing to do. 5D. This was a really good question. I'm, I'm, I'm sad it's over because when it's over, guess what? You leave. And that makes me sad, friend. But don't worry. I know you'll be back for free response question six. Anyways, 5D reads, is the function M defined in part C increasing, decreasing, or neither at X equals to justify your answer, which means math work, but if you want to write a statement afterward, you can. Because some people get like doubly anal about things and they get anxious about it. And they want to make sure when they got the right answer, they reinforce it with another correct statement. I mean, you don't need to do that, but we can do that if you'd like. Increasing or decreasing? This screams. Ah! Or neither. First derivative. I need to find the first derivative of M at 2. Okay? If the first derivative is positive, it's increasing. This should be nothing new. 
if the first derivative is negative at 2 is decreasing. Okay, and if you get 0 or undefined, it's neither. Okay, so 0 or undefined would give you neither. I don't think that's going to happen, but hey, you never know. I want to throw that in there anyways. Okay, so if we go back to part C, this is what they're talking about right here. M. So let's just first start by writing that down. So M of X from part C was 5X cubed, right? Plus the integration from 0 to X of F prime of T dt. I need to find the derivative of M. If I take the derivative of this, that gives me m prime of x, which means I got to take the derivative of this whole side, all right? And, and the first term is easy. So the derivative of this is just 15x squared, all right? But now I got to take the derivative of an integral. When you take the derivative of an integral in a situation like this, the derivative of an integral kind of cancel out. Okay, notice that the upper bound x is different than the variable here, and that's fine, okay? So what happens here is as follows. Uh, let's pick red. The integration derivative cancel. That means our dummy variable goes bye-bye, and whatever is up here gets substituted in for t, and that's it. So plus, it's still f prime. Okay, we're not integrating f prime to get f. The function stays the same. This just gets replaced by the upper bound x. That's it. It's that simple. Now, if the upper bound were 3x squared, then in here would be f prime of 3x squared chain rule times the derivative of the inside, which would be 6x. Okay? Yes, we still do the chain rule to this one right here, but the derivative of x is just 1. So when we multiply something by 1, we, re we really don't write that. Okay? So the chain rule does apply to every derivative we take. It's just sometimes the derivative of the inside is 1, and we don't have to multiply it times 1 because it would remain itself. Okay, so we have this down. So let's find m prime of 2. Well, that's 15 times 2 squared plus f prime of 2. My God, this is a, this is a part D question. This is so simple. This is great. All right? So let's figure it out, and let's end with this, this smooth, smooth purple. Okay? 2 squared is 4. 4 times 15 is 60. Okay? Plus f prime of 2. I mean, let's go to the table. Guys, here's f prime. Here's 2. They intersect right here. It's negative 8. I mean, the last time I checked, when I had uh, 60 and I subtracted 8, that gave me faded 2. Okay? So, okay. Is the function... They don't care the number. They're not looking to figure out, oh, tell me what m prime of 2 is. They're saying, is it increasing or decreasing there? So I better answer the question. Okay? Our derivative is positive. So m should be increasing. So m of x is increasing. At x equals 2. Now, I, that's it. Justification could be the math work, but I'll say since m prime of 2 is greater than 0, it's positive. There you go. Just to write uh, one, one more word, since, and then one small inequality. Uh, that is no skin off my buttocks. Uh, I don't think it is. It doesn't feel like anything happened. But anyways, we're done. This has been a really good exam so far. And we have one more video left for your response question six. Come into a theater near you. Buy your tickets ahead of time. It's going to sell out, kids. Bye-bye. Don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell.